Hey there, I'm Anton Anderson, the other co-founder of Elite Resource Team. So over the last few weeks, you've had a chance to hear from my business partner, Ken Smith. Typically, I work with the advisors once they've made the decision to move forward with our training. But I wanted to take a second, not only introduce myself, but also talk about the first steps in identifying the right type of CPAs that you want to be looking for. Here's the issue. So many financial advisors think that any CPA, any EA, any tax practitioner is the right type to partner with and nothing could be further from the truth. I'm telling you, you will waste so much time and energy trying to build relationships with CPAs or other tax professionals if you don't get very clear on the type that you want to work with. So what is the type that you want to work with? Well, first of all, they have to be a decision maker. Bottom line, no other way around it. They either need to be the owner of the firm or a partner in the firm. If there are multiple partners in a tax firm, don't spend any time trying to go for firms that have more than five or six partners. Once you get to that point, you're really gonna end up just spinning your wheels and wasting a lot of time, unfortunately. Really the sweet spot is those firms that have between one to four partners and have at least one or two staff members. Why is that important? It's important because they need to have somebody that they can get delegate to, to create a little bit of breathing room for themselves if they're gonna start changing some key elements of their practice, right? And their staff members allow them to do that. If they're just solo practitioners, unfortunately, they get so bogged down in the weeds that even if they love the concept of working with you, they won't be able to get out of their own way. What other things do you wanna look for? The number of clients? Sometimes, but that can be a little bit misleading because here's the issue. Sometimes advisors will come and say, hey, great news, I just met a CPA. They have 2,000 clients. Well, what is the relationship that they have with those 2,000 clients? If they are just doing tax return and compliance work, then they're basically a tax return machine. They have no loyalty, no trust, no credibility built with those clients. They're just cranking out 1040s and 1120s. That's not what we're looking for. On the other hand, sometimes an advisor would sit down with the CPA and say, well, they seemed like a good fit, but they only had 40 or 50 clients. I don't know that I want to work with them. I say, hold on, tell me about those 40 or 50 clients. Because what if out of those 40 and 50 clients, 90% of them are high net worth individuals or successful business owners, and they have incredibly deep relationships with those clients, and they're doing value-based billing with those clients. I would take that CPA any day of the week over a CPA with 2,000 clients. So don't get too hung up on the number of clients. Focus more on the type of clients. Here's the other thing you want to think about, driving distance. Can you work with CPAs virtually? Yes, you can in theory, but at some point there is going to become an issue where the CPA says, you know what, I got a call yesterday at six o'clock, I was just about to leave the office, my client's father just passed away, they inherited $500,000, they needed to sit down with somebody the next day. And unfortunately, because you're not close to the office, that call is gonna to go to somebody else. So it really does create some issues if you're not within driving distance to their office. We spent about a, a year and a half investing time in building a relationship with a firm, and they were about a 45 minute plane ride from our office, so not very far. But purely because of the fact that we weren't local in their community, we didn't know that, that community's demographic, eventually we lost that relationship. And we could have saved so much time and energy if we would have taken that same investment and focused on a local CPA firm. So that's the number of clients, the type of clients, the driving distance. The thing I want to reiterate is really focusing on the business opportunities, right? The business owners, the more business owners, the more opportunity, the more moving pieces, the more value we can deliver. Now, here's another question we get a lot. What do you say? What's a good elevator pitch, right? Let's say you're at a networking event. If you wanna to try to position your firm and really make a, a, a real genuine shift in the value that you are delivering to other professionals, you're no longer defining yourself as a financial planner. You're really defining yourself as somebody who delivers value to other tax professionals and business owners. 
I will be happy to give you an elevator pitch that I would often use at networking events. And I'd encourage you to write this down because trust me, it's gold. I used it for four years myself. What I would say is something along the lines of, I teach CPAs how to deliver more value to their clients by focusing on proactive and holistic planning. I'm happy to share that one more time. I teach CPAs how to deliver more value to their clients by helping them shift to more proactive and holistic planning. That is good stuff. So now that we've had a chance to talk a little bit about the first steps in identifying the right type of CPAs that you want to work with, well, it's fresh on your mind, I'd encourage you to schedule a private 45 minute strategy session to dive into more detail on this. We look forward to hopefully having a chance to speak with you soon.